O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless God's name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. God is to be revered above all gods. So say among the nation, the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. God will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For the Lord is coming to judge the earth. God will judge the world with righteousness and the people with truth. After this, the Lord appointed, set, appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever the house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide. For the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about the house from house to house. Wherever you enter a house and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Good morning. I'm glad that I found this place. I got lost on the way here. Uh, suddenly my, my, my navigation system told me, turn right, turn right, and I was in the middle of a huge constructing site. So. Um, I'm really glad I'm here. <laughs> so first of all, I want to thank you all for inviting me to preach today, to talk to you today. It's a great joy and pleasure for me that I can be here and talk to you. That, that's, for me, that's one of the, the great and wonderful things about MCC, that you can travel so many countries and visit so many cities and there is an MCC. There is an MCC where you can walk in and uh, just be greeted friendly and you know you are in a place with friends you might have not met yet, <laughs> but you know you're welcome. And that is one of the great, great gifts this church uh, has. And I believe that is one of the things we can bring to this world. Um, I was in contact with Deborah before I came here and before I start my sermon, I, uh, she asked me if I have, have a few pictures of uh, my church back in Germany because you might be interested to see how a MCC looks like in other countries. So I have a few pictures and those wonderful people in the back, uh, those technic wizards, I will talk about you later. Uh, they, they have to, oh yeah, that's uh, one of the, our gay pride uh, uh, moments. We, we have a huge gay pride since a few years in, in, in Stuttgart and we march as a, and we are the only church group that marches in this, in this parade. So it's not like I've seen here in, in the United States that other churches join in and seminaries join in. Uh, we are not quite there yet, but we are working on it. So uh, yeah, just handing out flyers and people telling me that I'm going to hell. Um, <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah, it's the same, I think, all over the world. There are always people who think they have to tell you that. Um, one of the things we do in, in Stuttgart is, uh, a few years ago, I realized uh, in all those glossy gay magazines, you, you know those, those, especially for men, uh, they, they always uh, uh, tell you what the best bar is and have an award for the cutest waiter in the best bar and things like that. And I, thought, I, I don't think the world needs something like that. The world needs an award for people who really do something, who really change something in, in the gay community. So we invented an award. We called it the Pink Detlef. Detlef is the derogative name for a gay man in Germany, so a Detlef. Um, so we, we, we claimed that word, and we invented that little man here uh, who holds a little pink gemstone in his hand, and we say thank you. Thank you every year for one organization 
and one individual. We do the, a little Oscar thing, you know, with the pink envelope and the drums in the background, <laughs> and things like that. So uh, I think that's, that's an important thing MCC can do also to say thank you to people. Would you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm really proud of this one. We joined Gay Pride, uh, the Gay Pride Association to protest what's going on in Russia. Uh, Russia is really, really horrible in the moment. They just passed an anti-gay propaganda uh, law, and we started a kiss-in uh, right in the middle of our, of our uh, uh, city to protest that, and we made pictures and sent it to the, to the ambassador of Russia. Um, he never answered. Yeah, well, uh, that was that was just before we before we just started to to kiss the guy next to me is the gay pride organizer uh, organizer in, in Stuttgart. I think there should be one more picture. Yeah, that's our that's our church. How it looks like we rent a room. We don't have our own facilities, unfortunately. We rent a room in the ho in a home for the retired for the elderly, and uh, that's our altar and the grand piano. That's Actually, that's showing off. That was, <laughs> that was a huge celebration. We usually are not that many. Uh, but I just thought, well, I, I can show off. And uh, you saw the, the grand piano in this room. That's one of the nice things about our, our room. And if you haven't said thank you for your mu musician lately, uh, then go and do it after the service. Because if this thing stands there and nobody plays it, it's of no use. So go and say thank you to, to him and to the people who play all those other things. I think that was it on, on pictures, was it? Yeah? So, you see, um, churches look a little bit the same everywhere, and there are always nice ideas, and I'm looking forward to hear your ideas of being MCC, uh, so I can steal them and do them in Stuttgart too. So. You have heard the reason why I'm here in, in, in Dallas. Uh, during the next week, we have a meeting of this international theologies team of MCCs all uh, in, in f uh, over in Fort Worth. It's an international team of women, men, and a trans person, persons of several colors, colors ages, backgrounds, and while I was re writing this, I realized I don't even know the sexual orientations of all of them. It's a diverse group. It's an interesting group of different backgrounds and interests. You see, we try to form a diverse group that does theologies in MCC. The task of this group is to talk about the theologies in MCC, to build up contacts to the academic world, create materials for congregations, and be of theological help for our moderator, the elders, and all the leadership in the church. You might have just heard me talking about theologies, plural, and not theology, singular. Uh, I might make a lot of language mistakes, you will hear me during my sermon, but this is not one of them, because this is where I want to start. We talk about theologies, several, many, a lot of them, because we mean it. There is not one MCC theology written down and fixed in concrete and rock once and forever, but we believe that there are many, many theologies, many expressions and meanings of our faith, many different approaches and words and images and theologies within the truth we all share. And this is why, uh, what I want to talk about. Who are those? Who do those theologies? Who are those people that do theology, those theologians of all genders and sorts? And I want to talk to you about what all this has to do with you, because it's more than just a meeting over in Fort Worth and somebody coming to visit you. It's more. But has this all to do with you here, this very congregation in Dallas? Because theology, the theology's team being Theologians is much more than a meeting of a few far away people that meet in secret and wisdom. But I believe with every part of my being and my faith that theology happens right here, right with you and within you. Therefore, let's quote 
Julie Andrews and the sound of music. You have heard I have a thing for musicals. Let's start at the very beginning, a wonderful place to start. So let's ask, what is theology? And you have heard the answer already, Mona already told you. The word comes from the Greek and it contains two words, theos, God, and logos, word. Logos is a difficult word with many layers of meaning, but for here, um, word is a good enough translation. So we can translate theology here with God word or God words. Theologians are therefore people who deal with God word, with the ancient and holy words and texts. People who read the holy text and think deep thoughts and speak deep words of wisdom about those what those texts mean then and now. People who search for a meaning in those words that come from God and who then try to write down that meaning, think it, say it. And be honest, that's often the image we have of theologians that people have in their mind. I don't know what you thought I, I was, what would look like, but I know what people think how theologians look like. Theologians are old men with long beards or elderly ladies with glasses and wrinkles and every now and then there is a fanatic youth uh, sprinkled in with them. Uh, but they all sit in the twilight of ancient libraries and read old dusty books in which other old men and wrinkly old ladies have written their deep thoughts in other libraries with boring books. And they are all far away from ordinary life, and it's all frighteningly boring. And when they talk, it leaves the average listener as befogged as before. And it has little to do with you and me or our life. Or talking about images. Uh, then we find theologians who really and seriously want to tell us that they speak and say God's word. Theos Logos, for us today. They are mainly men who claim for them, themselves the authority to say word of God for your life today. They claim that God talks to them and then they talk to us and tell us what God thinks and feels about you and me and what our reality really is. Uh, interestingly enough, they seem to do to like to do that on TV a lot nowadays. And sometimes I ask myself why God does not tell me directly what he thinks or feels about me. But that's another sermon. I will preach that another time. So let us use an example for that kind of God giving, God words giving theologians that is a, bit, a little bit further away, but will still explain the system how people think theologians are. Let me take you for a moment into ancient Egypt, when they still built pyramids there. In that time, theologians were indeed highly trained men who could read and write. Not a lot of people could do that at that time. And very important, they understood the stars and the seasons. In those times, as you know, people did not have calendars. They just could go in the neighborhood drugstore and, and buy them, hang them on the wall with little cute pictures of kittens on them. Huh? Uh, but that was a mystery to people. Huh? Time was a mystery back then. But those theologians, priests, performed what seemed to be a miracle because they understood the seasons and the stars. They were able to foretell, to predict the coming of the annual flooding of the River Nile, nearly to the day. And that was essential because those floodings, those waters gave life to the fields and thus to the people. Those theologians were able to say, the water will come next week around Thursday, maybe Friday morning. For the common people, that was a miracle. And for the theologians, the priests, it was a great source of power. Because whoever can explain the world to you will be listened to in many other things too. Who owns the word of God can also talk politics and finances and war. That is power. And for a long time, even today, there are people who use and abuse 
this Theo Logos power. And of course, now, and that's the difficult part, there is some truth in these images. Of course, academic theology is sometimes something difficult and complicated. But it, it's great that we have those libraries. I love those libraries. They are great places for learning. And yes, sometimes it is esoteric and boring and difficult to understand, even for those who have studied it. But the reality is, that is true for many other places too. If I bring my car or my computer for inspection and repair, the carologians and the computerology people speak in words. I have no idea what they are talking about. Take your technicologians over there. Ask them how all that works. You will not understand a word. But they do a great job. They know what they are doing, and you can see what they are doing. And of course it is true that theologians are often people who think a lot. Look behind the scenes and try to understand what's going on. Try to counter and fight those politicians with their power words and those Wall Street people with their money words and those Pentagon people with their war words. Theologians who want to tell right from wrong when power and money again will reduce human beings to numbers, resources they, that can be thrown away and sold at will. True theologians who really want to say God's word against people who claim their own bias against others as holy and sacred and as above the law. And yes, I know that all seems far away at the universities and seminaries in difficult languages that is not our language. But those are just the old images. Images I know that come up in our minds very quickly, but I want for now at least that you forget them. I told them so you can forget them, forget about them, because I don't think they really help us. What is this? this theology. Who are they really, those theologians? Let's go once more back to the word. Theos, God. That's clear. But now, look at the word logos again. Of course, we can use the noun logos as word, but we also can use the verb, logain, to talk, to speak. Then, theology is suddenly God talk. God talk, something which needs to be done. Something we should do, doing, not being. Live and fill with life. And not only a state of being written down once and for all. And who shall do this? Some few? Perhaps the theology's team? No, because we just have heard it in our reading. Remember our reading? Our time of learning? God talking is what those should do who Jesus sends forth into the villages and cities. There are many Jesus sends, 70 of them. And 70 is this number that comes from seven, the holy number. So it's a holy number of group of, of a lot of people. And I'm absolutely sure and convinced that Jesus did not have 70 academically trained theologians sitting around. But he told all who were there, now, you all, stand up, go, go to the people and talk to them. And I will send you like sheep, like little lambs among wolves into the world. And here, with this little part of the story we just heard, we have already learned a few very important things about theology. There are many, 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 not a few, of whom Jesus wants that they go out and talk about God. Many that do what we call theology, theolo theologian, God speaking. Just to make that clear, Jesus could as well have said, 
Okay, just a few, the 12, they go out. Those who have passed the exams in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, and systematic theology, and church histor history, and a few other things, and who have a little certificate they can hang on the, world, on, on the wall, wall, and they should go out. No, Jesus does something totally different. Jesus sees this group of people and says, okay, now go out, go out. Go out, you many, more or less everybody. And there is something else we have learned. Jesus does not give them any power to go along. Jesus does not say, go and teach in my authority. No. Jesus say, says, don't take money with you, and wherever you go, stay just in that one place, and then tell people. No money, no financial power, just two by two, so they are, will be not alone. No army, no power of the masses, but like sheep among wolves. So this image of the rich and powerful theologian who explains the world and has power, who talks to me from the screen of my TV in my hotel room and asks for money so they can pay for 12 channels on TV. <laughs> no money? Huh? Okay, um, it's not what Jesus sees when he sends out the 70. And there is a third thing I think we can learn about this God speaking, this God talking. Because it's the first thing Jesus tells to his friends that they sh shall say when they go into a place, when they enter a house, peace be with this house. Peace be with you. Shalom. That is the first thing that God talking is. That is the most important thing our God speaking, our God talking should be, must be. And when we then have done all that, all of us go out, meet people and say peace to them. Then we can go continue and ask, what else shall we say? What else shall we say in this theologian, in this God speaking? And this we just have heard in our psalm, in the first reading. It tells us what we shall do and tell the world. Sing in the, to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. A new song, sisters and brothers, not the old one. A new one that is exciting, that is rock and roll, that is jazz and blues and music we haven't invented yet. That is exciting new tones and melodies played with unheard instruments for the world. We all shall sing new songs. And we shall sing the old songs, but in new and creative ways. And singing we all shall do. Sing to the Lord, not only a few, but all, all the earth. That is what we shall do. So I have now thought about two new images, new words and stories I want to use when we talk about theologies. I can't tell you just to forget the old one without giving you a new one. Huh? New images that take away the old images of dusty books and boring theology and power. They are images I want you all to think when after this service you will go out from here into your cities and villages, into your world to be one and two of the 70s to be theologians, God speakers in the world. One image I came up is indeed the image of singing. Brothers and sisters, be, become singers of all you know about God. You all have so much to sing. Yes, I know some of you might be hesitant in singing. I know that. And yes, there might be some single individuals who have all those power in their fingers and their voices like angels that can lead us into singing and they can hit notes we, you and I, might only dream of. Yes, there are those few professional gifted musicians who practice every day so that we might enjoy their talents, those opera singers and pop stars. 
And it's good that we have them. And it's good to listen to them. And that's also true in the world of theology. It's good that we have a few who write those books, but they are not enough. They are just too few of them. And imagine just for a second how boring and silent and gray the world would be if there would be only the professionals. I want to hear your voices. I want to hear your choir, the humming and the grumbling, the whistling and the shouting. And I tell you, I don't know any one of you, but I know one thing about you. You can do it. I know you all sing your favorite song in the car along with the radio when you listen to it. I know that. And I know you shout those story, uh, those songs of your favorite sport team when you're in the arenas or in those uh, soccer games tonight, World Series, Germany against Argentina. <laughs> yeah, I know you sing them. Huh? I know you sing. And I know that most of you sing and jubilee those opera arias when you are alone under the shower and nobody else is in the house. I know you do it. Do it. Sing all the earth. You all know so much about God. You all know so much about Jesus. Tell it. Say it. You all have questions. Then go out and ask them about God and the Bible and about faith. Ask those questions. Because only our questions will bring others to the point where they raise their voices and answer with new ideas, with new thoughts. And if, and if then, after this sermon, one of you or the other feel the call to be one of those God singers, not only talkers but singers, then come to me. Come to me or your pastor or send me an email and I will tell you the places where we can learn to God sing, to God speak, where you can learn to be what you are meant to be, to be those coloraturo sopranos of God's talk and those bossy profundi of God speak. But whatever you do, sing, because that is what we need. That is what the world needs, those many voices that sing a new song to the world. And now, I said, not all of you might be great singers. So I have another image for you. The image of the gardener, and I see wonderful flower arrangements here, so there is at least one of you here. Gardeners who care for the plants and help that they grow and thrive. Sisters and brothers, be, become gardeners who plant those little seeds of God's presence in the world. And yes, I know, like the singers, there are those professional gardeners with their magical hands who are able to plant trees and vineyards. Those people who grow the most amazing orchids and trees with delicious fruit. Yes, there are those people who have trained a long time so that we can enjoy the fruits of their labor. But they are not enough. There are not enough of them. They are too few. And honestly, just imagine again for a second how boring and gray and how dead the world would be if there would be only professionals. I want to see your plants. I want to see them, your front yards and flower pots. I want to see how you water them in the summer of your life and in the winter of our doubts. I want to see them, your roses and the multitudes of herbs, your blue bonnets and pecan trees of God talk right here in Texas, your state flower and your state tree. I want to smell and taste them when you grow basil and thyme and all the other wonderful herbs from little, little tiny seeds on your kitchen window sill or plant a tree at the birth of a child to see them grow strong and independent child and tree alike. Stories of your way of life, of your path with God. You all know so much about God. You all know so much about Jesus. Let this wisdom grow. You all have questions 
about God and the Bible and about faith, ask those questions. Take the seed of curiosity from which you don't know what might grow out of it and plant it everywhere. Plant those new ideas, new thoughts. And even more, do not only be the gardeners of your own secret garden, but be gardeners of the world. As God talkers, we have a responsibility to care for the world, not only for our little, little thing here, that this is a cozy place. No, it's going out what we shall do. We shall go out and care for the world. You know that song. Let justice roll down like a mighty river and righteousness flow like an ever-flowing stream. That is what God, God talk is, giving water to the thirsting world. Let the water of mercy and peace flow in the deserts of the world and into the gardens of the people around you. And then things will happen. New things will grow that are beyond our wildest expectations. Another song. And the trees on the field shall clap their hands. And the trees on the field shall clap their hands. That is from the prophet Isaiah. And he had these wonderful visions about mountains and hills will, that will burst into song before you. And the trees on the field will clap their hands. What an what a Im image, what, a, what an idea. Hills that join our song of joy and trees Will, with hands to clap will grow and they will join us. At the end of this sermon, and I'm coming to the end now, you might have realized one thing, one thing I haven't told you. And this is the one thing I'm not going to tell you. I will not going to tell you what the right, the correct theology is correct in comparison to wrong. I'm not going to tell you. Neither as a theologian, nor as a pastor, nor as a human being, nor as a member of the theologist team. I will not tell you. If you come to me later and ask me, I will tell you about my theology. Oh, I can talk for hours, no problem. <laughs> as you imagine after the sermon. <laughs> I can talk about my theology for a long time, yes. And I tell you right now here that there are many theologies out there I will disagree with. And I object because I believe what the Reverend Troy Perry says when he says, when he talks about those theologies, he says in his right own way, they are the lie of the devil. Yes, there are theologies out there. God talk, I believe they are the lie of the devil. If we don't find peace at the beginning and the middle of the end in those words, then they are not God's word. And we theologians, we God talkers shall object them and I will speak against them. But I will not tell you now what you shall say, what you shall come up with, what you're talking about God shall be. I just ask you to do what Jesus told the 70s begin with the one word, and that is peace. Begin with peace. Say peace first. I do not tell you what to plant and what to care for, you God speakers in this room, that trees and flowers and herbs and all forms of fruit and vegetable and all other green things grow. But I will tell you the first fruit that we all share with each other, that we shall share with our friends and our neighbors, and most importantly, shall share them with our enemies. And that is the fruit of peace. Peace be with you and with all that belong to you. I do not tell you what to say, you God speakers. Sing a new song. Just let nobody tell you that you cannot sing. And remember the first sentence, the first line in that new song, 
in that song that we shall sing. Peace be with you and your house. So, at the beginning and at the end, peace be with all of you. Shalom. Amen.